Hey everyone, I'm Alex, and I'll be presenting joint work with Vinod and Daniel on constructing statistical Zaffer arguments from bilinear maps. So Zaffer is a term that we invented in this paper, but suffice it to say for now that it's a particularly nice form of two-message witness indistinguishability. So the paper is uh, freely available on ePrint at the link on the slide. So on that note, let's get started. The object we study in this work is closely related to the notion of a zero-knowledge protocol introduced by Goldwasser, Macaulay, and Rakoff. So just as a reminder, uh, a zero-knowledge protocol for an NP language L is an interactive protocol between a prover and a verifier, where the prover is trying to convince the verifier that a statement X is true, namely in the language, without revealing any information beyond that fact. So more formally, the protocol should be complete namely, if the statement is true and the prover is honest, then the verifier should accept. It should be sound, meaning that if the statement is false, then even if the prover is dishonest, the verifier should reject. And it should be zero knowledge, which says that the verifier's view in an interaction here should be simulatable without knowing the witness W that the prover has access to. And this should be true even if the verifier is behaving dishonestly. This captures the notion that the proof doesn't reveal any information about the witness. Due to a celebrated result of Goldreich, Macaulay, and Vigerson, we know that under the minimal assumption that one-way functions exist, there is a zero-knowledge proof system for every NP language. In the GMW protocol, soundness is guaranteed to hold against unbounded cheating provers, while zero-knowledge holds against computationally bounded cheating verifiers. It's also now known how to construct the opposite, namely a protocol where soundness holds against computationally bounded cheating provers, and zero-knowledge is guaranteed to hold against unbounded cheating verifiers. This is called a statistical zero-knowledge argument system. So this particular security setting uh, has received some interest because soundness is only a condition that you need to hold in the moment, whereas zero-knowledge is actually a property you might want to hold for all time because a proof will be posted somewhere, and you don't want anybody to learn anything in the future either. So for that reason, this particular pair of uh, security properties, computational soundness and statistical zero knowledge, is an uh, interesting one. So in this work, we narrow our scope to the following setting. First of all, as I just said, we're interested in getting statistical security against the cheating verifier. But second of all, subject to that, we want to minimize the amount of interaction between the prover and verifier. So in this setting, this means considering a two-message protocol. Uh, unfortunately, full zero knowledge is impossible to achieve in a two-message protocol, so we relax our security notion against the verifier to witness indistinguishability. This is a security property that says that when a statement X has multiple witnesses associated with it, then the proof generated by the prover using witness W1 is indistinguishable from the proof generated from a prover using witness W2. So a proof reveals nothing about which witness out of this pair was used. Two message WI protocols have been studied fairly extensively in the past, and so here's a summary of some of what's known about them. So they were originally constructed by Dwork and Naur under the factoring assumption, and since then there have been constructions under the DDH assumption, the QR assumption, and the LWB assumption. Uh, I specifically want to mention these two recent works that give a two-message statistically witness indistinguishable protocol using a framework established in recent works about correlation intractable hash functions, and this is all based on the LWB assumption. Uh, furthermore, I want to point out that some of these works uh, have, these, have this plus-plus notation next to the WI, and this is indicating that these protocols have nicer properties beyond just being a two-message WI protocol. What more could you hope to get out of a two-message WI protocol? Well, the problem we're really trying to solve is that of minimizing interaction between the prover and a verifier in a meaningful cryptographic protocol. So what you could really hope is, well, first of all, have it to have a two-message protocol. Uh, second of all, you could potentially hope that the verifier message is some random string which doesn't depend on the statement. And furthermore, you could hope that the proof is publicly verifiable, meaning that the verifier doesn't need to remember how he sampled this random string. Uh, in such a setting, you could have some initial verifier sample this first message beta, publish it, and then totally forget everything that happened. And still, as long as you trust that this verifier behaved correctly, any prover can then convince any verifier of even multiple arbitrary statements. You get nice reusability properties, etc. 
As a result, in this work, we define a statistical zapper argument, the main object that we study, to be a two-message protocol satisfying all of the properties we just discussed. Namely, it should be a delayed input, publicly verifiable, statistically WI argument system. So this notion is very similar to that of a zap introduced by Dworkin Noor, as well as a statistical zap argument introduced just last year. So the difference is that uh, Dworkin Noor's zap is only computationally WI, whereas ours satisfies statistical WI. Uh, and the difference between our notion and statistical zap arguments is that our notion doesn't require that the protocol be public coin, meaning that this beta, this first message, uh, it needs to be sampled independently of x, but it may not be a truly random string. So in other words, a zapper is a zap with private randomness. Uh, so now the main results that we show in this work is that statistical zapper arguments can be constructed under a standard assumption on bilinear maps. So now that you know the main statement of our results, let's go back and take another look at the prior work. So here's a more expansive table explaining what was known based on prior work. And as you can see, some of the prior constructions achieved these stronger notions of, say, reusability and public verifiability, etc., and some of them did not. So in Focusing now on the protocol satisfying statistical WI, uh, we can see that the DDH and QR based protocols that were known uh, were privately verifiable and not, and not satisfying these nicer properties. Uh, but the recent construction of statistical ZAP arguments based on LWE satisfies all of the properties you could ask for. And then in this work, we get the properties minimizing interaction, but not a public coin protocol based on bilinear DLIN. So in other words, until this year, there were actually no constructions of statistical zapper arguments known at all under any computational assumption. It wasn't clear if the problem had a solution. Uh, but then, as I mentioned, uh, there was a construction based on the LWE assumption that used this new correlation intractability technique. Uh, so what we did in this work is we went back to older techniques and older tools based on bilinear maps and showed that these could be adapted to solve a similar problem. So in other words, uh, one takeaway is that correlation interactability is not an essential tool for attaining this end goal, and neither is the very powerful LWE assumption. Uh, that concludes the introduction of the talk, so for the rest of my time I want to talk a bit about how our construction actually works. And since the ideas and the construction itself are fairly simple, we're actually going to see quite a lot of it in the talk. One of the main tools we use in our construction is a non-interactive zero-knowledge protocol for NP. This is a one-message zero-knowledge protocol, which is able to exist because we make a different modeling assumption from before. Namely, we assume here that the prover and verifier have access to a common reference string, which has been set up by a trusted third party. Uh, in this case, it turns out that the impossibility results for zero-knowledge can be overcome, and indeed one-message zero-knowledge protocols in this model exist. So, uh, but to make sense of this, we have to revisit the zero knowledge definition, which said that a proof for a true statement should be simulatable, given the statement and not the witness. So here we relax this definition to allow the simulator to also tamper with the common reference string, as long as it's done in an indistinguishable way. So uh, such an object is known uh, based on bilinear maps, based on the DLIN assumption that we're going to use in this work. And moreover, such a construction is known to satisfy computational soundness and perfect zero knowledge. So uh, in particular, this means the protocol is also statistically witness indistinguishable. So given the existence of this NISZK protocol, you might ask, why aren't we already done? It actually looks fairly similar to the object that we're trying to construct. Uh, but the answer is that this CRS modeling assumption is actually quite important. It's an important distinction from the plane model. And uh, and there isn't any obvious way to convert this protocol into a sound and zero knowledge protocol in the, the in a two message plane model. So the first thing that you would think of is allowing the verifier to pick the common reference string. But unfortunately, it might be the case that there are some bad choices of CRS that uh, that allow the verifier to cheat successfully. So uh, if you think about it a little more, you might think, well, maybe even if it's not always possible to convert this a protocol in this model to a plain model protocol, that the particular construction that we have might still suffice. In particular, this GOS construction, because it's perfect zero knowledge, what we actually know is that it's statistically WI for every single choice of CRS. Uh, and you might think that's enough already to convert it into a two-message protocol. Uh, 
So we repeat the question, why aren't we done? Uh, but the, the answer is the subtlety that a perfect zero knowledge property only guarantees that the construction is statistically WI for every CRS that is potentially output by the setup algorithm. So you get some form of semi-malicious security. If the verifier picks any CRS in the support of the setup algorithm, you get WI. But if the verifier picks something that's not in the support of the CRS setup algorithm, then you have no guarantees. And so in particular, this naive transformation does not actually work. So uh, with this difficulty in mind, I'll now start to describe a simplified construction. Uh, it's only going to work for languages in NP intersects co-NP. Uh, and I'll start out with an even simpler incorrect solution, and we'll work our way towards a functional protocol. So here's the candidate protocol that we already discussed, in which the verifier just sends a CRS unconstrained. And as we already discussed, this protocol fails to be statistically WI, because an adversarial verifier could pick a CRS string, which is not in the support of the setup algorithm, in which case we have no guarantees about the statistical WI of the second message in this protocol. So this is a problem, and a first idea towards resolving the problem is that the claim that beta, any fixed string, is a valid CRS, that is that it comes from the setup algorithm, this claim is an NP statement. And so we could hope to make the verifier prove that the CRS it picks is valid, thereby guaranteeing the statistical WI of the second message. So here's a first implementation of that idea. In this protocol, we have the verifier sample a CRS as before and send it over, and additionally send a statistically sound proof that the CRS is valid, meaning that it's in the support of the setup algorithm. The prover then only sends the second message after verifying said proof. So the prover won't send anything until he's already been convinced that his second message is going to be statistically WI. So that's good. However, in order for this protocol to be sound, we need the verifier message, namely this proof of validity, to not reveal secret information about the CRS string. If secret information about the CRS were revealed, then the prover might be able to break soundness of the overall protocol. So, for example, if the first message were zero knowledge, then we'd have nothing to fear. However, we know that one message zero knowledge proofs do not exist in the plain model, so we can't hope for this to work. Uh, the best we can hope to do is to rely on a non-interactive witness indistinguishable proof, otherwise known as a NIWI, which is known to exist based on bilinear map assumptions. So, uh, so a simple modification will get a working protocol in a special case. Namely, if the language is happens to be in NP intersects co-NP, then there is a simple modification to the previous protocol that will get something that works. So in this protocol, which is a working protocol for NP intersects co-NP, we have the verifier sample a CRS for the NISDK, send it over to the prover, and also send a NIWI proof that either the CRS is valid or that the statement X is actually false. Uh, so this is a classic trick for NP intersects co-NP, uh, and it works here. Uh, so then the prover verifies the proof that the verifier sent, and uh, if the proof checks out, he then sends over an NISDK proof using the CRS that the verifier picked. So, so let me just sketch uh, the proof that this is okay. So in order to argue statistical WI, uh, as I was saying before, since the statement is true, the NIWI uh, indeed forces the verifier to pick a valid CRS. And this is because the in the disjunction here, the second statement is, is, is false in this part of the analysis. And so uh, the soundness of the NIWI means that the CRS that the verifier picks, as long as the prover does not abort, must be valid. And because we started with an NISDK, which is statistical WI for every valid CRS, we get statistical WI of this plain model protocol. Uh, to argue soundness, uh, we just need to say that this, uh, this proof su supplied by the verifier doesn't tell the prover anything interesting about the CRS. And indeed, because it can be indistinguishably generated using a co-witness for X, that it's using information based on X and not based on beta, uh, this proof uh, computationally does not reveal anything about beta beyond beta itself. And so you get soundness by a reduction to the soundness of the, uh, of the NISDK protocol. 
That completes the simplified construction, which I think gets across a couple of the main ideas, namely use an NISDK argument and force the verifier using a NIWI to prove that he's picking a good CRS rather than a bad CRS. Uh, from now on, we'll see in a bit more detail the full construction, which works for all NP languages, uh, although I'll skip over some of the details. So again, working up to the full construction, let's consider a slight variant of what we've already seen. So in the protocol on this slide, we're having the verifier sample two independent CRSs using the setup algorithm for the NISDK argument and sending them both over. Uh, in addition to the two CRSs, the verifier will also send a NIWI proof that at least one of them is valid. That's still an empty statement, so we can still send a proof of such a statement. The, the prover, after verifying this proof, then picks a random one out of the two CRSs and computes an NISDK argument for the actual statement using that particular CRS. So, okay, this is a protocol. Let's stare at it for a moment and see what properties it has. First of all, I claim that it's sound, already as written. So why is that? Well, if the prover breaks the soundness of this protocol, if any cheating prover breaks the soundness, then this prover breaks the soundness with respect to either the first CRS, beta 0, or the second CRS, beta 1, with a factor 2 security loss. But no matter which beta r the prover is breaking soundness with respect to, this NIWI could have been generated in a way that leaves the soundness of the NISDK with respect to that beta r uncompromised. In other words, the NIWI could have been generated with respect to the randomness used to generate beta 1 minus r as opposed to beta r, and in such a hybrid, this NIWI does not reveal any information about beta r beyond beta r itself. So you can piece this together and get an argument for soundness of this protocol using the witness indistinguishability of the NIWI and the soundness of the NISDK argument. So that's good. We get soundness already of this two-message protocol. Now, this protocol itself is not statistically WI. In particular, you can see this because uh, a cheating verifier can sample one of the two CRSs uh, dishonestly in a way that breaks the WI of the NISDK protocol. And the prover might accidentally pick that CRS with, in particular, with probability half. The prover will pick, will choose to use that CRS with probability one half. And, uh, and WI is broken in that case. But we get some weak form of WI, namely this protocol is statistically WI with probability one half over this choice of R that the prover makes. Finally, in the full construction, we're going to have a more complicated variant of what we saw on the previous slide. So uh, here I've displayed what the first message in our actual protocol is going to look like. So what the verifier does is sample three T CRSs for some repetition parameter T and arranges them into a three by T grid. So we have T rows of three CRSs each. And the verifier sends all of these CRSs to the prover and sends a NIWI proof that for every row, at least two out of the three CRSs is valid. So again, that's an NP statement, so the verifier can send a proof of such a statement. Then the prover, after verifying this proof, is going to pick a random one out of every three of these CRSs. So that is for each row, the prover picks a random one out of three CRSs. And then the prover is going to somehow generate a single NISDK argument using these T CRSs that he subsampled. So we'll, we'll see in a moment uh, what's going on, but let's just, let's sketch uh, security arguments already as is. So first of all, to argue soundness of this two message protocol, we're going to do a souped up variant of our discussion from last slide. So if the NIWI is really secure, if it's say three to the T secure, then what we know is that for any R, for any subsampling that the prover picks, even if the subsampling is adversarial, there exists a hybrid there exists a hybrid generation of the first message in which every single one of the CRSs that is adversarially picked is actually uncompromised. So this actually bears quite some resemblance to an argument made by Kalai, Karan, and Sahai in the original construction of a two-message statistical WI argument, and we poured it over in a sort of different guise here. So, so that's going to come into the soundness analysis. And to argue statistical WI of this protocol, we're going to we're going to say the following. 
because of the proof that the verifier is forced to send over in the first round, what we're guaranteed is that within this grid, this T by three grid, in every row, at least two of the CRSs is guaranteed to be valid. So then the prover, when honestly sampling this random string R, that is subsampling one CRS out of every three, uh, we're going to get that with very high probability, about two thirds of the CRSs at least are going to be valid in the prover subsampling. So in order to be done, what we need is a way to convert T CRSs into a single argument for, a, for an MP language with the guarantee that if at least two thirds or close to two thirds of the CRSs are generated correctly or from, or from the right set, that uh, WI carries over. So it's a sort of special purpose combiner that we need that converts about two thirds correct CRSs into an actual WI argument. To solve this final problem, we turn to the MPC in the head technique. So just to quickly sketch what's going on, uh, in our work we consider the MPC in the head technique as an information theoretic object, which takes an NP witness W, secret shares it into T parts, and then writes down an execution of an MPC protocol in which party I is given WI, and the T parties are jointly verifying that W is a witness while keeping the witness distributed amongst the T parties. So the way that we use this information theoretic object is we write down commitments to every view of each party, and we write down commitments to every pointwise channel, that is the transcript of communication between party I and party J for every pair I and J. We then assign a CRS to each party in our heads, and we're going to write down NISDK proofs using CRS I of the consistency of party I's view with all of its channels all of its communication channels with the other parties. So we're trying to prove an overall consistency statement about this MPC execution, and we use CRS I to prove all the statements about party I. And if you think about uh, the way in which the MPC execution is interacting with these CRSs, uh, it turns out that as long as at least two thirds of the CRSs are statistically WI CRSs, the overall proof that you write down here will also be statistically WI as long as the commitment is also statistically hiding. And this now completes a full description of the protocol. The only detail that I've left out that I think is worth mentioning is that in order to prove that this protocol is computationally sound, we still need the commitment to be statistically binding. Uh, but to prove that the protocol is statistically WI, we need it to be statistically hiding, and this seems to be a contradiction. But the resolution, which has uh, been used in all constructions of two-message statistical WI so far, is to use a commitment scheme which is statistically hiding overall, but with small probability, it is also statistically binding. Uh, so that's a detail that I'll leave to the paper to discuss. So to conclude, we construct statistical zapper arguments, which are the minimally interactive statistical WI argument that you can think of from standard assumptions on bilinear maps. And we use a bunch of standard but very powerful tools for in this construction, namely the GOS NISICs, both variants of their NISIC, the MPC and the head technique, which we abstract out as an information theoretic object that we call locally zero knowledge proof, as well as a sometimes binding statistically hiding commitment that has been integral to all constructions of two method statistical WI protocols so far. So just to leave a couple of interesting open questions, is there a construction of this object from factoring? It, uh, factoring at least gives us a MIWI, so there's some hope, but there are definitely some things missing. Uh, you can also ask if we can have any construction of a two-message statistical WI argument without making use of complexity leveraging, which has come into play in this third bullet point in every construction so far. Uh, so those are some interesting questions, and thank you for listening.